Hello, we're going to create a loom from our beautiful painted plate. On the back of the plate should be your name, just in case someone needs to give it to you, and your class code if you're in school. So now that you have this pencil, you're ready to do the next step. You're going to use a template, and I used to lay it on top and have people do the pencil lines there, but there's actually a better way. You can lay it on the back. The template has some big open notches and without letting anything slide or move i want you to pencil in those notches onto your painted plate so that your notches end up in the same exact spot as the ones on the template if they ended up bunched or moved you can erase them and retry the next thing you're going to do is do the crazy clock order this is going to help you put your warp thread on in the right way. The order is one, six, seven, then three, then two, then five, then four. This will be at your table and you can copy the order onto the back of your plate. So double check it, make sure it's right, name, class code, one, six, seven, three, two, five, four. So you'll see that um, our front of our beautiful plate is still looking beautiful. And it's time to get scissors and do one simple snip right at each of your pencil marks. Bring the tip of the scissors from the edge of the plate all the way into the bump. You wanna keep your notches pretty straight so that we can barely see them from the other side but we do want them to go deep enough that we can tuck our yarn in there it's different from the template the template has big open gaps so that our pencils can trace but your plate just has one slice of a scissor so don't make big gaps in your plate so you're gonna get a piece of yarn and you're gonna start at the number one you're gonna tape it down. Our yarn is gonna go up through the odd number doors and down through the even number doors. Here's what I mean. I'm gonna bring my arm yarn across and I'm gonna go down through number two. Then I'm gonna to go to my neighbor and go up through number three, it's odd. Then I wanna go down through the next number, which is four. Then up through the neighbor, five. Then down through the neighbor, six. And down from the person across the street, six. And then down through the neighbor, I mean up through the neighbor, seven. Seven is your last door that you had to go through. And you'll see now that you still have extra yarn. And you'll see that you almost have the spokes on a wheel. And you'll see that once you do your last spoke, everything should pull down into more of the center. So the hub is in the center. I'm gonna make a little wad of yarn by wrapping the extra around my fingers because it's time to start weaving. When we weave, you want a little packet of yarn like this that's easy to hold. And you're gonna decide which direction you wanna go. I like to go counterclockwise. You can also go clockwise, but I like to go counterclockwise because I'm right-handed. And I'm going to start by going over the first spoke and under the next one. Over, then under, then over, then under. When I get back to where I started, I can give a gentle tug to get that hub more into the center and continue. It's kind of like a spider going in a spiral around its own web, except each time you encounter the spoke of a wheel, you have to go over and then under. If you forget where you are, you can always look. What I did right there was I pulled gently to close the yarn up into the middle. Let's see if when I do that again. I'm going to do a few over-unders, and then I'm going to do a gentle tug to close the yarn up without making anything too tight. Right now, if your 
plate is starting to curl up, you'll want to undo what you've done and make sure that everything is loose enough to continue going. If your plate is curling, let's loosen up and make it pretty. So once you get into the rhythm, weaving tends to go quickly. You'll find yourself maybe making a pattern like over, under, over, under, over, under, pull. Over, under, over, under, over, under, pull. Because there's an odd number of spokes on here. The last time that you went under a spoke, you'll find that when you come around again, you're going over that spoke. So if you ever stop and forget where you are, look very closely and see what the last thing you did was at the base of your little gathering. I could see I was under, so then I went over the next one. And the whole time I'm using both hands to cooperate in passing my little wad of yarn through. If you try doing this with one hand, you'll be slowing yourself down. You should use two helping hands. So I went around a few times to create a little black dot in the middle of my weaving, and I decided I wanted to add some new yarn. You don't have to use long yarn for this project because it's such a small plate. And it, what we need to do is tie yarn, the new yarn, to the old yarn and just continue weaving. One way that people do that is they might do two shoe tying knots, a double knot like that. And that works okay, but it might pull out. So I'm going to show you an even better way. You're going to lay the two yarns side by side like two friends right up against each other. And then you're going to make a curly Q and then pull their heads under and through. If yarn can be tricky to hold and handle, so be very patient with yourself and your fingers. So I'm going to go under and through with their heads after making that little loop. And then I pull it tight and then I can continue to weave. So just enjoy watching your weaving slowly grow and develop, choosing colors that look beautiful with your plate and with your other yarn. And weave as long as you have time or can fit yarn onto your weaving.